Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to see a very interesting case of exporting the data from Appian here. You might have observed that it is very easy to export a grid and this is the most used export option. For example, here I have a vehicle maintenance site and in that you can see here multiple vehicles have been listed here like Fortuner, Honda City, Creta, Baleno, Mahindra, all these are listed here and we, if we want to export this data in excel so by default appian gives the option to export the excel data as well so if i click on this download button this excel file would be downloaded here it will have all the details whatever the data you have seen on the grid all the details will be available here. so this is one kind of export let's say that if i went in the hyundai create summary view so here you will be able to see the complete summary of the Creta vehicle so here you can see the, de the details about the vehicle whatever you have seen on the grid and then there is the service history for that uh, vehicle as well all these are there now let's say that there is a huge case that i want to export this summary view as well can we do that because see this come data is completely you know like dynamic here sometimes it will have five service history sometimes it can have two or one as well sometimes it, it can be null as well and this details will also be dynamic here is it possible to do that so that's what we are going to see today so now here you can see there is an action button which has been provided here generate file how this action button works is that first of all when you click on that generate file here it will try to create the html data for this summary view it's completely dynamic and when you click on download button here this html data would get downloaded and here you will be able to see hyundai creta hyundai creta and all the details about it service history as well would be shown to you now let's say that i want i don't want the html file i want the data in the pdf files here and in our community there is no plugin to convert that html data into the pdf file then what can we do in this case uh, or let's say that in any normal situation as well we don't have any plugins as well to convert in the pdf how can we do that so here i have tried to add an action button here as save as pdf in the P in the html document itself if you click on that save as pdf what it will do here is it will try to create the pdf from this html data and here Appian is not at all involved. It is completely a functionality of HTML only and the browser will automatically treat it as a PDF. Click on save button and it will ask you to save that data. Okay, once it is saved, we can go and view that data. Let me show you that PDF file. So this is the PDF file which has been generated from directly the HTML. So here you can see all the details have been there and in the vehicle service history as well or in the grid you can see all the five items as well. And this is completely dynamic. You can generate n number of rows as well as long as it supports in the HTML you will be able to see that data in the PDF as well. And here we have not involved the Appian smart services. But if you do it through the smart service, it may have some limitation like what HTML data would be treated and what not would be treated there. So that is a limitation there. But here, obviously, whatever you see on the HTML page, all these details will be captured in the PDF here. Here you can see a bit of misalignment is there. So we would have to, you know, like uh, check on the root cause why this is not getting properly converted in the PDF. Now let's see that how have we managed to do this one. First of all, let's go on the process here, like what is actually in the process model. So in the process model here, you can see there is a script task to generate the HTML here. So if I open this script task, there is a rule which is generating that HTML data here. So here you can see export summary in HTML to PDF and this is that rule. Now let's try to understand this rule because this is a very important part here and you would have to write that data anyhow that is very important to write the data first of all we have seen a condition that if vehicle id is null then all this detail will be null here click on test here if no vehicle id don't generate any html but let's say like if i have done two here it will create an html document for the vehicle id too how let's see that first of all we are querying the data here so you can see here query record by identify and this is the vehicle id and we are also getting the related data as well so all the service history should be present here 
okay so once we have got all data here you can see all the vehicle data would be listed vehicle id 2 vehicle id 2 is a honda city and it has five service history here so all the five service histories are now listed along with all its fields after that now in html it is very important that you follow the syntax if your syntax is wrong it will not render properly so here you can see i have tried to create a variable for the header and one variable for the table part here because table is completely dynamic in the header what i have done we have added here header the style and that print button is very important if you you, will, you you might notice that when i click on save as pdf this print button is not at all showing on the pdf okay so that is also a, one of the feature of this html we have tried to use here you have to write this print button like uh, print button hide this particular functionality needs to be written there then it won't show in the pdf here after that we have just followed the normal uh, html document here so that it will refer the data in the exact same order here okay and then finally we have added the print button so here this print button class we have added no print whatever we have defined at the top here like on converting on the pdf it should not show after this we have just added the basic configuration for the print button like on click windows print style and then padding so all this data you don't even have to remember you can just google it or on you can just google it and get the html data from the online sources as well i will try to share this data uh, in the description box as well you can check that data once this print button is done now we have added one by one all the data here like vehicle model vehicle variant you can see here everything is following the same thing div and then div is starting color is in bold you can see here b syntax is written it means that where is the color here and then we have added that value how are we getting the value local bank vehicle data dot color here again this closes and this similar approach has been followed throughout everywhere you can see here this is following the same approach here all the tags one by one and finally comes the for table here so for table we are iterating over vehicle data dot service history here because there are multiple service history as well which are present here so tr and td and then we are writing the value of our service id vehicle id one by one means whatever the columns that you need that's all and finally we are ending the html tag here and you just want to see that how does the output look like so just copy this data there and just go to html online compiler any tool you just go and try to test your data like how does it look like and you will be able to see the data here click on run and see we are able to see the honda city along with it this way. and anything you want to edit or any data you can easily edit from here as well it is very convenient to do now once our html data was saved now let's see that how on the ui we have added this button so if you go in the summary view this is the button for that let's see the configuration for this button here so this is a button array layout we have taken and on the button widget we have added the label generate file now size is small and we are starting up process model whatever this process model we have configured we are starting that process model and make sure to parameterize the variable at least the vehicle id is very important because that will be dynamic every time so we have parameterized the vehicle and here you can see vehicle id and this is the process model we i've just given the number but you can also give the constant as well of the process model so this is the id of that process model and vehicle id we are passing dynamically and it's synchronous you have to keep it true otherwise it will have issues and then on success what we are getting how we are getting the document so what happens when i click on this generate here once you click on this generate document here here you will be able to see the document id so on success it is saving in the local bank document every bank process info to get the data from the process model then dot pv and then new document this is how we get let's say like if i don't write these all things and if i let's just click on test once and again if i try to generate the file you will get the complete information see so much information we are able to get process parameters process model values and then you only you will get p that's why we used to write something like a, this one here dot pv and then dot new document because here is our document 
once that is done then here let's try to test it once again and click on generate here so once that is done then you can see the generated html document will be shown here after that once button is done and this button will only show now if you can see here generate file is not at all showing so this whole button will only show if it is null or empty but as of now it is not null or empty local bank document then there is a document download link we have given here so local bank document we are passing in the document download link whatever is there and it should not show when it is null or empty so it should be not null or empty local bank document then only this file will be shown here and in this way we have configured this button configuration there first of all you have to define a variable and then you have to save that data into that variable here so we have now seen how this expression works and how the output as well translates into the actual html file now the next question is that how does this html document actually get converted to the html file itself so this is the smart service which help us to do that where you will find this smart service you have to go in the document generation and here the text doc from template this is the last smart service which is present here you have to just drop that smart service and what it is using go to the setup tab you have to have a html template here here you can see ma summary template is there what is inside this particular template so there is nothing much inside this template you just have to go in the documents here so this is the document and this is the summary template you can see here less than 1kb nothing is there click on this file here and you can see here hash 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 and then value is there and it should be of type dot html any notepad file just open it write this particular value and just save it with dot html extension there after that you have to give the name for this one here and where you want to save and in the value we have to pass the complete html data that's all and go to the data tab and here you have to use the output as new doc so now you will be able to create html document as well in appy I have not used the HTML doc from template because this used just the key value substitution. Whatever we try to give as a key, then only it will substitute. But it, all the complete HTML data we cannot pass it. It will be difficult to get here. So that's why we have used this particular smart service. Uh, and once this instance is completed, it will try to create a document. And that document obviously is present here and when you click on this pdf now it will work okay so that was about the generation of the html data with the help of expression rule and then generation of the html file with the help of the smart service so now that we have seen how does this whole process works so just wanted to share some last few thoughts that this may not be the best solution to create the pdf files uh, okay but it may be the last resort let's say that you are in a tough situation and nothing is working out and business anyhow want that pdf to be generated or created so it may fit in that role there it may be the last resort you can say that if nothing is working out then this method you can say that yes there is a method as a last resort which we can suggest or which we can implement appian so do try this one out and let me know what are your thoughts on this so that was all for now guys thank you